Hi book lovers! Welcome back to my channel. I am back with another monthly book haul. It's another good one. I mean I feel like I say this every month but for some reason July was just the month where all these book boxes, the ones that got delayed, they finally arrived. So I have a ton of new special editions, new book boxes to share with you guys. I have a very very tiny a polycon haul and of course even more books that I bought for myself. Before I get into all the books that I got though I do want to share a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Book of the Month. Book of the Month is a monthly subscription box service and every month you get your choice of one of their five to seven hardcovers using your monthly credit. For the month of August they have seven books to choose from this time and the great thing about Book of the Month is that your credits do roll over so if you decide to skip a month you can save that credit to be used for the next month. You can currently join Book of the Month in August and get your first book for $9.99 using the code SIZZLE. So from their August selection I did get two of these books. This is Small Angels by Lauren Owen which is a fantasy book about two sisters and it's got magic. And this one is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney which is a thriller set in this gothic house. Book of the Month also just launched a new podcast called Virtual Book Tour. It's hosted by two members of their editorial team, it's recorded live, and they also get to interview a bunch of their featured authors so you can listen now, you can subscribe on Apple and Spotify. I'll leave the links down below for you to join Book of the Month and also check out their podcast. Don't forget to use the code SIZZLE to get your first book for $9.99. A big thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video and back to the haul. So diving in to this July haul, I got two romance arcs last month. This one I got from the publisher. It's Bend Toward the Sun by Jen Devon. I believe this is a debut romance. Yeah, it's the author's first book, which is always exciting. It's straight up just a contemporary romance. The heroine has a PhD in botany. The hero is a doctor but he's feeling tortured right now after losing a relationship. They meet at this vineyard, they fall in love, it sounds very angsty and emotional which I'm not really in the mood for right now because I have to be in the right mindset for something like gut-wrenching. But the reviews on Goodreads have been good for it so far so hopefully I do like it. And then the other arc I actually got from Lenora Bell herself. This is her upcoming historical romance. It's Duke Most Wicked with this cover. It's it's part of her Wallflowers vs. Rogue series which I still need to read. They all sound so good and this one also sounds great. The hero is a duke and he is a very poor duke. He needs to marry for money in order to support his family and the heroine is not an heiress. She's actually his sister's music instructor. So he can't marry her because he desperately needs money but I am very intrigued by the whole music aspect. There's a whole piano on this cover and I'm just excited to read this one. It's been so long since I last read a historical romance. I also haven't been in the mood for historical romances lately but I feel like I'm gonna crave them really soon. Also Lenore Bell was so sweet. Uh, she sent the book, the arc, along with a couple of goodies. There's a card, some bookmarks, a microfiber thingy with her book on it, a magnet with another book of hers, and this red MAC lipstick. I also got some more historical romances from publishers. This is the new cover of a Tessa Dare book, an older Tessa Dare book. I had no idea that this got the Bridgerton cover treatment and I'm not exactly happy about it. It's Twice Tempted by a Rogue and as you can tell it has a very Bridgerton style cover which I'm not a huge fan of but it is what it is. This is part of her Stud Club series and I'm not exactly sure why they sent me book two and not book one but yeah this is the second book in the series so they're all they all can be read as standalones. I have read book one before and I wasn't a big fan of it because it was way too much about horses for me and unfortunately the rest of the series is also about more horses Courses, so I don't know if I should try reading more. But let me know if you've read the series and what you think of this new cover. And then the other historical romance I got is Nobody's Princess by Erica Ridley. This is the third book in the Wild Winchester series. It's about a family of these spies, these thieves, and the heroine here wants to be her country's first royal guardswoman. I also got this lovely stack from Berkeley. This is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I've actually started this one in audio. I haven't really gotten that far into it though, but 
There have been so many great reviews for this book and I've been very curious about it because it's a ghost romance. The heroine is a ghostwriter for this famous romance author but she needs to turn in this book that she's struggling with. She can also see ghosts so when she goes back home to her family, to her family's funeral parlor, she sees her recently dead editor. So it sounds really fun. People have been loving it. I have no idea how this book could possibly end though, how they're gonna get their HGA but I'm here for it. This one is Not Again by Quana Jackson. It's got a firefighter hero and the heroine is his old high school crush who is now a single mom. I also got No Funny Business by Amanda Axel. It's a romance between two comedians who go on this cross-country road trip together and I've never come across something like this so it sounds pretty unique. This is The Accidental Pinup by Danielle Jackson which I am listening to in audio. It's been really slow so far though. I can't say that I love it, but I do love this cover. It's about two rival photographers who work together on this lingerie campaign, and then the heroine, who is usually behind the camera, she finds herself being a model this time. And then one of my most anticipated reads of the year is the new Nalini Singh, Storm Echo. This is the latest book in the Psy Changeling Trinity series. We have another Psy Changeling pairing, and the Psy here is another Mercant, and it sounds like the romance has some amnesia going on like the main characters they knew each other before but then the heroine forgot everything. I'm dying to get to this one because it's giving me Heart of Obsidian vibes which is one of my all-time favorite books so I need to get to this one soon. And I got some books from some other publishers. This is the new Scarlet St. Clair. It's a reprint of her YA that she originally self-published a couple years ago. It's When Stars Come Out and it's her YA fantasy. The heroine is in high school. She can see the dead and then one of her classmates ends up murdered. This is American Royalty by Tracy Lewisy, who I just got to meet at a polycon, so I did get to get my book signed. I have read this one. I thought it was really fun. The heroine is this famous rapper and the hero is a prince. He's a professor and a reclusive prince and he's put in charge of this concert and he ends up hiring the heroine because her name is Duchess and he had no idea that she was a rapper. I also got the new Anna Todd book, The Falling. I've never read her before, though I have watched the after movies. It's the first book in the Brightest Stars trilogy and it sounds like it's friends to lovers. It's got a hero in the military. He's a soldier about to be discharged. I also got this one, The Bodyguard by Catherine Center, which sounds so, so good. It's got the bodyguard trope, the heroine is the bodyguard, and it's got the fake dating trope. She's the bodyguard for the famous actor Hero and he asks her to pretend to be his girlfriend when they go to his hometown. Mainly so his family won't find out the reason why he has a bodyguard which is that he has a stalker. But it sounds great. I'm hoping it's gonna be heavy on the romance but I have read Catherine Center before, one of her women's fiction books and I still loved it so I have high hopes for this one. This is The Hookup Plan by Farrah Roshan. It's an enemies to lovers romance. The main characters reunite at their high school reunion. They were arch nemeses, but they're now all grown up. He is this big millionaire and she's a pediatric surgeon and he's the one who's in charge of seeing whether her hospital should be shut down. I got the new JC Lee, a book on a feeling, which is set in this small town bookstore. The heroine is a lawyer who has been insanely stressed, so she goes back to her hometown and decides to run a bookstore. And then the hero is the guy who used to have a crush on her growing up. I got this finished copy of Thank You For Listening by Julia Whalen, who is an audiobook narrator. And this is an audiobook narrator romance. So the main characters, they're chosen to narrate this famous romance author's final book. And they fall in love, even though the male voice narrator, he is anonymous. And then I also got the new Alexis Hall, which is husband material. It's the sequel to boyfriend material. So main characters here, they're about to get married or it's more like they're feeling like they should get married. So if you love boyfriend material, there's a new sequel to read. A book that I was so happy to get was Laura Olympus Volume 2. It's in this beautiful hardcover. I love it so much. I love Laura Olympus, though I am quite behind on the story. I stopped reading the webtoon like two years ago maybe. So I am way behind. I don't know if volume two is like season two, but if it is, 
it should be all new material for me, so I'm excited. If you don't know what Lore Olympus is, it is a webtoon. It's a Hades and Persephone retelling. I got sent this box of something from a publisher. It's for The Valkyrie's Daughter by Tiana Warner. This is a YA fantasy, a sapphic YA fantasy, and it also came with this cute t-shirt that says Valkyrie in training. I also got quite a few books from Sourcebooks. A Duke at the Door by Susanna Allen, which is a paranormal historical romance. Wolf in the Shadows by Marie a Veil, a Paranormal Romance, Never Enough Cowboy by Jenny Martz, Cowboy Romance of course, To the Gates of Hell by David Nix, which is a Western, A Remarkable Rogue by Anna Harrington, another historical romance, and this last one is another historical romance, Blame It on the Earl by Jane Ashford. I also got this really pretty book in the mail. This is Mika in Real Life by Amiko Jean. I believe the author is a YA author, but this one is adult. It's about this woman who gets a phone call from the daughter that she put up for adoption 16 years ago. What's interesting though is that this heroine, she pretends that her life is more successful than it is and she also ends up falling for her daughter's adopted father. I got yet another box that a publisher sent me. This one is a romantic suspense. It's All the Broken Girls by Linda Hurtado Bond and it came with this cute little tote bag that says I'm all booked up. Moving on to some indie books that I got from authors and publicists. This is a new Devney Perry Garnet Flats. It's another small town romance, romantic suspense. It's part of her Eden series which I really need to start. I just finished off her Jameson Valley series series. It's taken me years to finish, but I loved it. It was so good, so I'm probably gonna start this series next. This is book three in the Eden series, and it's a second chance romance, my favorite. It sounds angsty and messy, because instead of the hero marrying the heroine, who was supposed to be the love of his life, he ended up marrying her best friend. I'm really hoping there's some good growl in this one, because I'm gonna need it from this guy. If anyone has read it, let me know what you think. Jillian Dodd sent me That Forever, which is part of her That boy series. It's book eight in the series and you definitely can't read it as a standalone. It's new adult and friends to lovers though. I got really remembered by Emma Chase. This is a novella in her royal series. It's basically just a collection of short stories that are set in the royally series. I got the new K Tucker Running Wild. This one came out a little earlier this year but it is the new book in her wild series. It's a standalone. It's about a new couple. If you've read The Simple Wild this is Marie's book. She is the vet in Alaska and her hero is a competitive musher, which sounds so, so interesting. I love Kay Webster. I mean, I love most of her books. She's had some weird ones, but most of them I've enjoyed. And I was so happy to get Death Wish, which is the second book in her reverse harem duet. It's a sequel to Triple Threat, and the whole duet was so good. I loved it. It's a reverse harem romance series about triplet heroes. The heroes are identical triplets, and they were kind of in the mafia, kind of not, and they they pretend to be the same guy because of their mafia uncle in order to infiltrate the heroine's life to get revenge against her father. So it gets crazy in this series. Wild stuff happens. Most of the steam happens in the second book. It's a great duet though if you love reverse harem, forbidden romance, noodle romance, and steam. You definitely should read these books. I was also very excited to get the new Elle Kennedy which is a high school romance a high school noodle romance. Elle Kennedy is going back to high school here. It's Misfit book one in the prep series, The Hero. His mother marries into money, so now he has to go to this really rich all boys prep school, and he ends up falling for the headmaster's daughter. And then I also got a bunch of books for myself, like this giant stack. I've been meaning to get Off a Night by Nalini Singh since it first came out because it was the only one that I was missing in the Sign Changeling Trinity. So I finally got it. Now my collection is complete, at least until the next book. But it's so pretty. I love the covers for this series and I mean I love the books too. In this one the heroine is the alpha of her pack. It's a wolf changeling pack. And then the hero is an arrow so he's a very broken sign. The romance was so so sweet. I brought myself this hardcover so I could bring it to a poly con to get it signed by QB Tyler, but then Amazon decided not to ship it in time. So this hardcover of Love and Expected arrived like the day of or the day after I flew out to DC, but it's gorgeous. It's my favorite QB Tyler book. It is a very, very taboo forbidden romance between the heroine and her stepfather. I also decided to finish collecting some other favorite series of mine. So I got Wherever You Are by Kristen Becker Ritchie. This is the second book in the Bad 
that reputation duet. I own book one and I own the hardcover of both books. So this is the second book in Willow and Garrison's duet. It's set in the whole addicted series world. And then one of my favorite mafia romance series is the Monster in His Eyes series by J.M. Darhauer who hasn't released a book in a very long time. But I love her. I love her books. I love her dark romances, her mafia romances, and I really hope she comes back. But this is Target on Her Backs which is book three, the final book in the Monster in His Eyes series. It's an age gap mafia romance. There is a slight forbidden element to it, kind of, but it's so good. I love it. I love the hero so much. And then I also had to get the final book in the Twisted series. This is Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. It is very thick. It's the biggest book in the series. Like each book just got longer and longer. I have read this one. It's not my favorite, but I did have to get the paperback just to complete the paperback collection. If you haven't read it yet, it's got a billionaire hero who is obsessed with the heroine, who is a model, like an Instagram influencer, and there is fake dating. I got Does It Hurt by H.G. Carlton because this is my book club's read for August. We're going to be chatting about this one at the end of the month. It's another dark romance from H.G. Carlton. It's set at this lighthouse because the main characters they get stranded on this island. It sounds great. It's like a dark psychological thriller and I love H.G. Carlton's writing. I loved her cat and mouse duet so I'm excited for this one. Also have to get one of my favorites of this year which is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. This is a very popular book. I got hyped and it totally lived up to it for me. It's a very long, very thick book. It's a small town romance, a bit of a slow burn, but it was such a fun read and I loved it. And I had to get some more favorites of this year for me. These are the first two books in the Bonds That Tie series by Jay Bree. Book one is Broken Bonds and book two is Savage Bonds. I have been loving this series so, so much. I binged the five books that are out so far, like back to back, and I'm currently dying for the sixth and last book. It's a paranormal reverse harem romance series. It is so good, so addicting. It's got these really cool magical powers and there's five heroes and you love them all, but it's so great. I love it. I'm so glad that I decided to give Jay Bree a second try because that first book of hers that I tried was not good. I didn't even make it past two chapters, but this one was amazing. And then for my tiny Polycon haul that I got in DC, I picked up my two pre-orders. I pre-ordered My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey and Dark Harmony by Laura Thalassa. I had the other cover of this book, but I also wanted the new cover for My Killer Vacation, and it is adorable. But I love this book. It's another favorite of mine this year. It's such a funny summer read. It's like a cozy mystery romance with grumpy sunshine. And then I had to get the final book that I was missing in the Bargainer series by Laura Thalassa. This is one of my favorite fantasy romance series and I'm so, so happy I got to meet Laura Thalassa and get my book signed by her. And then shout out to Annie and her friends for gifting me this special edition of A Shadow in the Ember by Jennifer L. Armantrout. I didn't get the ticket where you would get this special edition for free, but she and her friends don't read fantasy romance so I was able to get a copy from them and it is so so beautiful like all this gorgeous red foiling on it the sprayed edges I love it here's like a closer look at all the prettiness I believe this edition was made by the bookish box I also got these cute strawberry earrings from Sophie Lark I thought they were adorable the strawberries are the thing from Brutal Prince and then for some book boxes and special editions I have so many to share with you guys this first one this first box is actually from a Kickstarter that is ending in like two days, August 10th, I think. I got this PR box from them and oh my gosh, it's so nice. So Peculiar Tastes is this new series. It's got monster romances, paranormal romances, and I think one non-paranormal romance, so one contemporary romance. It's a series of six novellas by six different authors. There's Katie Robert, Jenny Nordback, Nikki Sloan, Adriana Herrera, Sierra Simone, and Zoe Castile, and I've read five of them and love them. So in the Kickstarter, you get to get this fancy special edition hardcover or paperback, and it's got this gorgeous foiling, and it's a flip be floppy book. That's what they call it. There's two books in one. You basically just flip it over to read the other side. But the hardcover is so beautiful. This is The Demon Sparkin by Katie Robert and The Death Gods Sacrifice by Jenny Nordback. There's also some swag options with some very not safe for work 
art prints and some really pretty vellum inserts. I didn't really know these were a thing until lately and they're so nice. You just stick them in the book to look pretty. But hopefully I get this video out before the end of the Kickstarter so if you want to get your own box you can. The ebooks will be out later. You just can't get these special foiled editions anymore. And then I got this beautiful set of the Bridgerton series by Julia Quinn. These were the special editions from Only McCrate that sold out in like four minutes. But look how pretty these spines line up. They're so so nice. I love all the foil and the sprayed edges. So here's book one which is The Duke and I. Book two is The Viscount Who Loved Me with this B. Book three is An Offer from a Gentleman. This is book four, Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. Book five, which is my favorite, it's To Sir Philip with Love. Book six is When He Was Wicked. Next is It's in His Kiss, which is book seven. And then the final book is On the Way to the Wedding, which is the youngest Bridgerton's book. And then for some Mystic Box goodies, I'm a rep for them. And they finally sent out the Penelope Douglas box. And oh my gosh, it's beautiful. It's the special edition hardcovers of Hideaway and Kill Switch, books two and three in the Devil's Night series, because they already did Corrupt, book one. So they're slowly finishing up the series, and the covers are gorgeous. I love them. It also came with three art prints. This one is Kai and Banks from Hideaway. There's also this Kill Switch art print of Damon and Winter. And then, of course, it's the Four Horsemen. And then a pin with one of the Devil's Night skulls. I think this is Damon. Demons. And then after the Penelope Douglas box came the Pam Godwin box with Sea of Ruin and Dark Notes, two of my favorites of her books. She's such a fantastic dark romance author and Sea of Ruin is such a good dark historical romance. Look at this pretty cover and all the gorgeous foiling on it. And then Dark Notes is such a good forbidden age gap taboo romance. It's a teacher-student romance. And then the sister box to Mystic Box is Belle. This is their contemporary romance box. Mystic is all about the dark romances, so these are the more lighthearted and just regular romances. So the authors were Kay Tucker. This one is Be the Girl. It's such a pretty pretty cover with these sprayed edges. And the other author is Siobhan Davis, and this book is inseparable. And look at these pretty edges. The box also came with these transparent sticky notes, a cute little sticker, and a pen. And then the newest sister box to Belle and Mystic is Arcane Society, which is all about fantasy and paranormal romance. And their first box, their first author, was Laura Thalassa and her Four Horsemen series. These are so freaking beautiful. I love them so much. So those were the spines, and then these are the sprayed edges. Here's book one, which is a Pestilence. Book two is War and it's tied for my top favorite of the series. Book three is Famine and I love the green on this one. And then book four is Death, my other top favorite of the series. Like look at all the pretty gold foiling. They're so beautiful. I love them so much. And they also came with these um, very, very nice art prints of the Four Horsemen. So that was Pestilence. This is War. This upside down one is Famine. And then the one with the wings, Death. Ugh, love them so much. And then the second author was Suzanne Wright, who I recently reread and I forgot how hot her books are, but they're really good. So these are the first two books in the Olympus Pride series. When He's Dark is book one and When He's an Alpha is book two. And I actually really like these girl covers. I know some people aren't a big fan of them, but I really like how they turned out. And also the sprayed edges are so stunning. And then I also got my first bookworm box box because I heard it was going to be L. Kennedy and it was. This is a special edition of The Chase, which I'm not going to lie, I'm not like 100% in love with this cover. I mean, it's cute. I just expected a little bit more from it. And the weird thing is that there's two signature pages in it. Probably an accident. I got these three books all the way from Australia. This is the special edition of Darling Venom by Parker S. Huntington. It's got so 
much foiling on it. This one is Wish Upon a Star by Jacinda Wilder. I have not read this one. I haven't read Jacinda Wilder in so, so long. And this is Don't Kiss the Bride by Carrie and Cole. I mostly got this box for Carrie and Cole and Parker S. Huntington because I loved both of these books by them. The hardcovers are really nice with this foiling. I mentioned earlier that I love H.G. Carlton and her cat and mouse duet and I was able to get one of the scratch and dent copies of her special edition omnibus. So it's both books in this giant hardcover and it's so nice. I mean the front cover I'm like meh. I don't really love the guy on the cover but I do love the foiling and the back cover is stunning as well. There's the foiled spider, the foiled spine, and then the edges are really nice. I know she said that they weren't perfect but honestly it looks pretty great to me. If you love dark romances I highly recommend the series though you should definitely check for the triggers especially for book two because things get insanely dark. This next one isn't like technically a special edition and it's not from a box. It's from Indigo all the way in Canada. They had their own edition of The Wall in Winnipeg and Me by Marina Zapata and of course I had to get it. Luckily though I was able to save on shipping because I ordered with a bunch of other people so like the bulk order helped lower the shipping cost because shipping from Canada is not cheap. But yeah, it's got this cutesy illustrated cover. I mean, I still love the original cover, but since I love this book and this author, had to get this edition. Here is the newest special edition from the Trope of the Month box from Hello Lovely Box. It's the Brit by Jodi Ellen Malpas. This one was from the Antihero box, so it's like a dark mafia romance. I think it's the author's first mafia romance too, and I do really like this cover. And then these are the final books, the final special editions to wrap up this long haul. This is Boyfriend Bargain by Elsa Madden Mills. It's a new adult sports romance, and it's got fake dating. The Sweetest Oblivion by Danielle Laurie, which is one of my favorite mafia romances. And then A Lesson in Thorns by Sierra Simone, who I love, though I have not read the series yet. I don't know if we'll get special editions for the entire series, but this one is so pretty. But that is about it for this July haul for me. Oh, I forgot to mention, I did get this Romanticy Reader t-shirt from Hello Lovely Box. I'm also a rep for them, so check them out. As always, let me know your thoughts if you've read any of these books that I've mentioned or if you're looking forward to reading any. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye!